The market is going crazy, guys. These once great books, awesome keys are now on the drop list. And some of these might even be great spec for movies. Stay tuned. Welcome back, gamers, to another incredible, exciting, fantastic episode of Comic Game Time. Uh, if you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach, and this is Princess from Royal Highness, looking very lovely, just like usual, doing that princess wave. You do it too. Bow down, respect, and of course, there's a Coco. Oh, Coco made the show. All right, guys, we are back on this awesome Monday where we are going to report on this week's biggest drop books in the comic universe, as it may be. Mm. Think there's comics on other planets. If there's other, if there's life on the planet, they, they might have comics. They might have comics. Did you know the first comic ever made was a cave painting? A yeah. cave painting? Yeah, they were fighting dinosaurs and saber toothed tigers there and all that go. fun stuff. There you go. Or you know. But what do we do on every Monday, guys? The Comic Games crew gets together. We scour the internet for trending hot lists, any kind of speculation list from one year ago. And we look at the reasons why these books were hot, and we fast forward to a year later and find out why they're not now, and how far they've gone down in price, whether or not you should be maybe thinking about picking this book up, or Zach will let you know you should never have thought of this book to begin with. And if you stay to the very end of the show, the slab master of the Comic Games crew, Coco will let you know which book you should, I mean, Zach will let you know which book you we should look be, so much alive. You should be picking up. Oh, and you will only hear it here first. All right, guys. Before we get into any of that, we need to wet our palate for some new information. Or cleanse our palate. Wet our palate? A wet. The wet the palate. And I'm going to wet my palate with this thing called tea java. I thought it was called something else, but that's... Tea java? Tea java. No, Maybe the J is silent? Tea java. Tea java! No, I like tea java. Anyways, unsweetened tea. It's lemon black tea. Has zero calories, zero sweetener, and zero brains. Anyways, it tastes zero. Zero. <laughs> it doesn't. It's a taste good like mixture anything. though, lemon and black tea. Yeah, it's like two teas that normally aren't together, but yeah, I've never. I've always wanted to try this, but I never bought it to this day. Better over ice. You drink it cold at least. It's like no flavor. It has literally zero flavor. It's like a slight, like little drop of lemon. But you kind of taste the black tea, it's... Yeah, definitely probably would be better over ice. Is it at least cold? No. You're drinking at a warm temperature? It's lukewarm. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You know what's kind. not ridiculous, though? Hanging out with That's us on Whatnot what every Saturday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You get to hang out with Adam and Zach first. We'll warm you up. We got the best deals on Whatnot. Dollar Stars, 30-second auctions, all keys. Mm -hmm. You stay up a little bit later, you get to hang out with the princess, her very own show. She does all the talking, me and Zach are just kind of in the background drinking. And yeah. she has the best mystery pulls on whatnot. Also, Dollar Starts 30 Second Auctions. Some of the best looking variants you can find. Oh, yeah. Real variants. Sexy. Not those fake ones. All right, let's get into some real comics, some real drop lists this week. All right, let's start it off on the list. We got number five, Marvel Preview, issue oh. number 28. 1976. Whoa. And we actually don't have a lot of the books on this list this week. Surprisingly enough, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but Nick Cardi, Bill Manilow, I believe this is a repeat offender on the drop list. So hasn't dropped too much, but if you're wondering what this book is, it's first team appearance of the Legion of Monsters. And that consists of Ghost Rider, Man-Thing, Morbius, and Werewolf by Night. And, uh, you know, this book has always been kind of a little bit of a surprise to me as a collector why it's so expensive. I mean, it's a cool book. Mm -hmm. You know, Legion of Monsters has been a thing that's been going on, you know, obviously since 1976. It's still going on even to this day. But, you know, it's not like a super old book. It's not Silver Age. I feel no. like anything that's like a Ghost Rider key tends to be more expensive than other books for some reason. For some weird reason, maybe not a lot of people were buying this book back in 1976. Those, you know, premiere, spotlight, those kind yeah. of like offshoot ones maybe that's why it's a little bit i'm not quite sure zach will probably let you know more with with the graded numbers that's probably why it's more expensive but um this this book got hot last year because of all the speculation basically all of these characters have been introduced in some form or fashion in the silver screen the big screen the big mm -hmm. screen the big screen we've seen them all some positive 
Some not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Werewolf by Night was obviously really cool. We got to see Man Thing in the same TV show. It was also really cool. Morbius left something to desire. Uh, which I don't know. Now with Sony and them, I don't know if we're going to see that crossover together. And then Ghost Rider is obviously inevitable. Is it going to be Nick Cage again and Deadpool 3? I don't know. Are we going to see all four of them together? I would probably guess not. I just don't see how that would work out, you know? If right. It's gonna, if it's going to be. But you never know. I think this will always be a pretty expensive book. And Zach will probably let you know better on the numbers. So. Right. A year ago, it was a monster mash. For a CDC 9.6, was 1,175. Now, it just crashed. <laughs> Not that much, though. 1,050. Nothing crazy there. 788 was the low over a year period, and 1,175 was the high. Average sales $1,003. It's an 11% drop for a 9.6. In a 9.8, it was, oh, on a, oh also for the 9.6, just up to like a, like a week ago, uh, the last sale was 788. It would have been a more massive of a drop if we would have done it one week in the past. But something would have happened. Something happened. Must Something must have happened. A little outlier and, purchase, yeah. 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 Like, well, actually, two back to back was like a thousand something. Or, no, no. Anyways, yeah. anyways, it was a thousand <laughs> fifty last sale. And something happened. Some kind of like people got to stick up their butt. Or maybe they heard something. Or so remove they the stick. Or remove the stick. And, you know, the book jumped up in price by $300, basically. Okay. And for 9.8, the last sale for 9.8 was $4,050. Four times the amount of a 9.6. So that's pretty unheard of. Usually it's about double the price of what a 9.6 is. So when it's four times, that's very interesting. And here's some CGC census numbers. I might explain that. There's 1,750 total graded. Only 35 of them are 9.8. So it's 2% of total graded. And that might... 2%. Yeah, 2% is the best part. <laughs> and that might explain why the 9.8 commands such a high, higher value than the 9.6. Uh, this book's pretty decent. It's pretty cool. Great cover. Great cover. Very iconic cover. And that's one of the things I kind of go by a little bit for a book that's gonna last like you always remember that cover you always remember a af 15 because it's very iconic you want to look at that and the key appearance those two things will kind of make the book last longer or spike up for longer periods of time so yeah it's a great book uh it's a little high price right now for a 9.6 so if you can find a nice raw copy and think about getting graded if you think you can get a 9.6 or even higher, yeah, I would do that. Nice. It's high, high price right now. It is a high price book. It will always be a high price book, mm-hmm. it seems like. All right, it's time to rage out a little bit. We got number four on the list. We got The Incredible Hulk, issue 234, 1979. Al Milgram, Roger Stearns, really cool Al Milgram cover on this mm-hmm. one. Uh, first appearance of Quasar, who uh, formerly was Marvel Man. Uh, before becoming Quasar. So, Wendell Elvis Vaughn is his real name. Kind of cool. His middle name is Elvis. And uh, if you're wondering, when he was Marvel Man, or previously Marvel Boy, his first appearance is actually in Captain America 217, where uh, there's a storyline where Nick Fury puts together a, a new team that he wants basically Captain America to lead, and when he shows him Captain America, he's like, all right, I'm going to fight everybody on this team, and he kicks all their butts, kicks all their butts, and then after he beats him, he's like, Falcon's going to lead this team. And nothing really comes of it, but later on, uh, Marvel Boy ends up obtaining the Quantum Bands uh, mm-hmm. from Eon, and he turns into Quasar and becomes this basically really cool character who is the protector of the universe mm-hmm. and basically fights a lot of like cosmic level being characters. Did some cool stuff. He's died, he's been resurrected. Uh, Eon was killed and then resurrected as Epic Epoch. Mm-hmm however you want to pronounce that, becomes this new, like, leader. They're kind of connected, and then his bands can also let him transport into the quantum zone when he's, like, switching places. So there's a lot of cool stuff um, that goes along with this character and a lot of good speculation that we could see him in the Marvel Universe is why he's kind of, like, spiked up every few years. Um, He has a big role in the Kang War in the comics, so I think we're getting a movie called Kang War, I believe. He's also... um, 
friends with uh, Monica Rambeau as well in the comics, which Ooh. we've already seen her. Oh, and if you didn't know, the quantum bands were previously worn by two other characters. The original Marvel Boy, who is a different person altogether, and Captain Janice Vale, Captain Marvel, also oh, wore the quantum band. So I would think it's very, very likely we're going to see Quasar. There is a female version of him later on, which they may gender swap. You never know how that goes. There's a lot of gender swapping going on these days. Mm-hmm. For better or worse. And uh, cool character, cool book, but Zach will hit you more on those numbers. It's on the drop right now. Yeah, it was Intergalactic Planetary at $321 for a CGC 9.8. Now, it becomes a Microverse at $275. Range 172 to 535 is the high over an entire year. Average sales 303. It's a 14% drop. There's 1,019 total graded. 191 of them are 9.8. So that's about 19%. Of total grade. Oh yeah, it was a fourteen percent drop in price. I think my maybe I said maybe I didn't. I would say that this is very similar in the cover st- uh, cover style of uh, Avengers Avengers Annual Ten. It's kind of it's a little silly cover, uh, not quite iconic like we were saying about the last book we were talking about, but it has a significant appearance, so that will help it out. Um, I don't know much about this character other than he's pretty powerful. Really powerful. Uh, really yeah. powerful. Um, has good history. I mean, this is like a roll of the dice. I think it's... I think you can find this book raw like we we have and maybe get a 9.8 out of it and you might be able to save some money on that. I mean, $275 for a 9.8 of this character who could have very reaching, far-reaching... Um, consequences to the marvel universe because he's so powerful and so well connected i mean he could be a fairly big character in uh, you know the cinematic universe so i mean yeah uh if you find it for a good price i'd, I'd probably pick it up i mean it's, it has a lot of potential it just doesn't have that iconic cover kind of feel that's the only thing i'm kind of like yeah anyways Consider it. <laughs> He's like having an argument with himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Consider it. Mm-hmm. It's a consideration book. I mean, it has a lot of potential. So, yeah. I think it's probably going to happen. We'll probably see Quasar. I would imagine. If the MCU doesn't get, like, this tossed out the window, we will definitely see Quasar, I would guess. All right, number three. We're halfway through the list. This is the big spec book of the day. X-Men Annual, issue number 14. The most controversial book in comics. 1990, Arthur Adams, Chris Claremont. Another uh, kind of cool cover, right, Zach? Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe not. I know who you talk to. First appearance of Gambit. Oh, wait, cameo? cameo? First appearance? I cameo? Don't, I don't know. Whoever I, you want to talk to. That, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> we've got, we've had this argument below. many times. I believe this is a repeat offender on the list as well. There is the old Uncanny X-Men 266. Whatever you want to say, whichever one you believe, obviously this book was printed before that, but in story, 266 actually takes place before that. There's obviously times when books get printed before other books, so CGC always recognized 266 as the first appearance, and I think the the comic community or comic family uh, sees that as the first appearance, because that's Mm -hmm. a way more expensive book. Um... This is a cool book because Gambit has been speculated on for the MCU for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Um, People have been thinking it's a good character to show up. Um, You know, big question is who's next for the MCU Mm mutant-wise? Who's going to be the next character? We've already seen Beast has now shown up. We've already got Chuck, uh, Professor Xavier, Kamala, and is Gambit next? Do you think Gambit's going to be next? There's a lot of speculation that... A Channing Tatum may show up in the Deadpool 3 movie. He's been wanting to... I think he's actually wanted to play this character like three or four years ago. Zach's dancing to invisible music in his head right now. It's Magic Mike. Yeah, Magic Mike. Magic uh, we've already seen Gambit once before. Do you remember when we saw Gambit before yeah, the, that? The, the, the and everybody's Gambit. favorite X-Men origin Wolverine that came out. We got Taylor Chris played Gambit back then. He has not had very good luck playing uh, roles... For, and movies, but... No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, so, you know, it's hard to say. I think Gambit's a good bet. It's it's with the way this Deadpool movie's rolling out, Deadpool 3, 
and there's all these weird cameos of like characters that we had or characters that we should have had. You know, is it going to be like a one-off? Will we see Channing Tatum play the character and then get killed off and he'll be in a different multiverse and we may not ever see him again as Gambit? I think he'd be a hard character to bring in to play like maybe five or six movies as Gambit. You know, he's got a lot of stuff going on. Is he going to want to do that? Would we be better off with a younger younger actor taking up the role and being able to like, you know, sign on for a huge movie deal and go further with that? It's hard to say. I, I don't know. I feel like Deadpool 3 is either going to be really, really good or really, really bad. And I don't know. The way Marvel's been going, it's hard to say. Definitely let us know in the comments down below. Who would you like to see as the next X-Men uh, character to come out? Who would you want to see, Zach? I, <laughs> uh, Psylocke, again, with the same actress playing Psylocke. Really? Yeah, I, I, I really liked it. Um, actually, I probably would have to say Rogue again. Oh man, all of them, all the ones I want to see have already been shown. You just but want like, to see like the hot girls. I just want to see the it hot. Doesn't matter girls. the good story. We saw a story. Doesn't matter. We could see the hot girl with a crappy story. Oh, oh, Hope Summers. Oh, there you go. That makes sense. Don't, don't do hope. No hope. Oh. No hope. There's no hope. Yeah, no hope. All right, number time. All this right. Book has gotten cheap, guys. Cheap. Your they were they were throwing aces a year ago because CDC nine point eight was selling for three hundred dollars. Now, you only get the Jokers. It's a joke. At $157 for a CDC 9.8. Ranked 157 so it's the lowest point in the entire year, to as high as $780. Woo! Average sales T33. Criminal. It's a 48% drop. These numbers are pretty crazy. There's 6,708 total graded. 1,448 are 9.8s. That's a lot of 9.8s. So the 9.8s flooded the market and dropped the value of this book substantially. But it still is about 20%, 22% total graded that are 9.8s. So the thing is with this book, actually I don't, I don't mind this cover at all. Some people don't care about it, but I actually think it's pretty, pretty decent. It's almost like you could make it out of uh, stained glass, uh, like a mural out of that stained glass. Cool. That would be cool. That's almost like what Nice I'm back seeing. tattoo, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get that as a back tattoo. I mean, it's almost, it basically looks biblical, what's happening on the scene. You got a bunch of characters on there, and he tells a story right there. There's Rachel Summers right here. Franklin, I think Franklin Richards right here, and a few other people. Some dude I don't recognize in the back. It's supposed to be the bad guy, a.k.a. the devil. Um... It's definitely not as great of a cover as 266. No, that's a good cover. But this has the iconic feel to it. This has iconic cover feel to it. And for a hundred and what, fifty-seven dollars for nine point eight? I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I might have to pick one up really mm-hmm. soon. Or a couple of them. Because this book is gonna go up. It is. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you get a newsstand. That's true. That's true. Square square bound book too. Square bound. Square bound. Yeah. Square bound so. She got a new stand. Yeah. She did. Yeah. And one last thing. Try to get it signed too. Certified signed CDC. I think that would bring a lot of extra value to it. Anyways. Alright, guys, you guys can tell Coco's getting restless. She wants to hear about the number two book on the list this week and we got New Mutants 99. Nine. Oh, tricked you. 1991. Rob Liefeld, Fabian Nassiza. Look at those feet. Look at those, look at those nice feet on the yeah, cover. Yeah, Woo! Great. Sexy. Yeah. All right, guys. We didn't know. This is a, a very underrated book, I feel like. Very mm-hmm. underrated book. We got first appearance of Shatterstar. First appearance of Feral, who Zach is a big fan, a big fan of Feral. And sexy. Thunderbird changes his name to Warpath. Maybe the most confusing character in all of Marvel Comics because I can never remember which one's which. Yeah. Was he Thunderbird? Was he Warpath? Was he Warpath first? And then he... I don't know. It gets confusing. Which one died? Which one's still alive? Very, very confusing. Mm-hmm. Well, in November last year, 2022, Louis Tan, who was the actor who played uh, Shatterstar in Deadpool 2, did a good job. Mm-hmm. Did a really good job. Teased that he might be returning in Deadpool 3. And uh, he's 
racking up a little bit of a career for himself lately. Uh, most notably, he was the main character in the new Mortal Kombat movie that came out, which I thought overall was very good, except I didn't like that the main character was not a real Mortal Kombat character, but Scorpion was really cool in that movie. Scorpion, he saved saved the movie for me. He's also in the Netflix Shadowbone series that came out recently, which I know Zach's been binging that a little bit. He loves the Shadowbone. Yeah, and Shadow and Bone. if you're asking yourself... Who is Shatterstar? What is his powers? Well, I'll explain them to you. What he has increased glorious? senses, which is really cool. I'd love to have increased senses. Strength, speed, reflexes, agility, flexibility, stamina, and intelligence. Pretty much he's just better at everything than you are, which is what he says. Yeah. So, surprisingly, he got killed by uh, what? Like, you got, what? Wait, was he? A, no, he was ground. No, he wasn't. He grounded. went into that like sawdust machine and got ground up in the sawdust machine, right? I thought that was like a Zeitgeist got to. Got oh yeah, you're right. What? And he threw up on that one guy. What happened to Shatterstar? Did he get let? No, Brad Pitt got electrocuted. Oh, I don't. Oh no, he was hit by a bus, wasn't he? Yeah, Shatterstar, and he sense. blew up like a bug. That maybe. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Anyway, I don't know. He did that whole like went into the past and changed some stuff. So maybe we'll see Shatterstar again. Uh, cool character. You know, been in the X, X Force for X Factor for a long time. Get those two confused. But more importantly, this year, maybe it's the time for 99. It's X Force. X Force. Anyways, uh, that's ooh. right. X Force. X Force. And also, I have some extra information at the end for this book. So, the prices for CEC 9.8 a year ago it was shattering at $143 for 9.8. Not bad for That's a good return this for year. a $10 book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. $10 raw, you can make some money on that. But now, $59. No, you cannot make money on that. No, 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 no. no, no. So, range $41 to $143. Average sales $96. It's a 59% drop. There's 603 total graded. 233 of them are 9.8. That's 39% of total graded are 9.8. So, that's free. If you get above 25%, you don't really want to see that. It's a bad sign. This book's super easy to get into 9.8 if you know what to look for. White cover, too. Yeah. White cover helps. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh, also, very confusing. So, he starts off, he was raised in Mojo World. Shadowstar was. Yeah. Right? He was raised with all that alternate dimension goodness. And you find out that he is kind of like a time traveler. He was actually, they, they don't really explain his origin at all up until like recently, I think 2010. Uh, so he's actually a time traveler. I think they sent him back, probably with no memories, from the future, right? Mm -hmm. To now, or back then, to Mojo World, right? So they could take his DNA and alter Longshot a little bit. Because Longshot was, you know, modified, a modified human. Mutant slash mutant. But the interesting thing is, who sent him in the past was his future self, right? Uh oh, your head's his, about to explode. His future self sent his younger self into the past. So. To kill John Connor? No. <laughs> so, Longshot could get his powers. Do you know. Okay, I got his one better for you. Do you no, know no, who no, his no, parents no. are? No, no, Do that's you know what I was going to say. That, his parents are Longshot and Dazzler. Yep, that's true. That Longshot right. and Dazzler are the parents of Shatterstar. Mm -hmm. Eventually in the future, his future future self sends a baby back so they can take the, or send the, his younger self back so the Mojo people can take his DNA to make Longshot Longshot. Yeah. He's <laughs> his own grandfather. Basically. Dad, I, I don't know. It's just so <laughs> confusing. All right, guys. Woo! Coco had to leave the room for the number one. She didn't want to hear it. We got a curveball. Number one drop book of the week. And this this is a surprise or a shocker. We got Avengers 144, 1976. Gil Kane, Steve Englehart. Woo! Patsy Walker becomes Hellcat after finding the original cat's battlesuit. So, Patsy Walker, crazy character. I think she's one of the oldest, if not the oldest Marvel character, right? Of all time. Pretty old. Yeah, and last year, her book was spiking a little bit. She had some fun stuff going on. She was going to marry Tony Stark. She oh. had her own solo book coming out. She's looking hot in that yellow suit. For some reason, now Mary, uh, Tony married uh, 
Emma Frost? I don't know. He must must be hopping from from chick to chick now. Would. Who would you rather marry? Emma Frost. There you go. There you go. But oh, yeah. cool thing, if you want a little history on our friend Patsy Walker, uh, she started out her first appearance in Miss America magazine issue number two. All the way back in 1944. Mm -hmm. Big, big book. And later on got her first solo title called Patsy Walker Number 1, 1945. And uh, that's a Marvel, Comics, uh, Marvel comic way back in 1945. And a little tidbit of knowledge, in issue 106 is the first time they ever did the Corner Box logo oh. on comic books. Okay. And that was to help collectors see their comics a little bit easier as you scroll through them. Oh, huh. I see what you're First saying. First time on Patsy Walker, issue oh. number 106. So, interesting stuff. We did get to see her, kinda, in uh, Jessica Jones. She was one of the characters in there, played by Rachel Taylor. And uh, I think her name was actually, like, Trish Walker in oh. the show, but she was supposed to be Patsy Walker, I believe. Okay. Not like her nickname was Patsy, but her name was, like, Trish Aww. in the show. So, we have kind of seen her. She did a really good job. If they do bring her back in the MCU, I'd love to see that character play her again. Like I said, one of the oldest Marvel characters of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, as old as, as Cap, basically. Yeah, 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 basically pretty close. I yeah. mean, about a four-year difference. Yeah, so pretty cool. So. Pretty cool. Zach could hit you with those numbers. Might be the time. Might be the time for the cat. Is or, there a year of the cat? Is there? No, there's nah. a year of the dog. Yeah. Why would it be the year of the cat? Because they're delicious. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyways, uh... Prices for 9.4 a year ago is perfect, perfect time for you to sell. Perfect. <laughs> uh, for 9.4, it was $455. Woo! Now, the cat had its eight of nine lives die. <laughs> At $139, you can get a 9.4. Uh, range 135 to 455. Episodes 257. It's a 69% drop. Oh, yeah. On 9.8, you can acquire it for right now $1,780. It's still pretty expensive. Still pretty yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that should be Bronze Age. Yeah, yeah, 76. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that should be Bronze Age. There's 1,062 total grade. 26 of them are 9.8s. That's 2%. That's Ooh. a sweet spot. Ooh. That's a sweet spot right there. Interesting. Interesting. If you could compare... The other book on the 9.8 for similar age, the Marvel Premiere 28, I'm going to say 48, 28, it's four, it's $4,050, and this one's 1780 I mean, I would say they are on point. Both of them are on point. Why is this book so much cheaper? Less popular character, probably. Yeah. But still, yeah. still, it's kind of like half the price, less than half the price. It's interesting. So, yes. This book, kind of on the table for a 9.8, but 9.4, it is a very nice cover, and it's very attainable for a book of this that could be of a high stature. This could be like equivalent of Electra, Bullseye, or any other villain. I should say hero, but anyways, villain, you know, kind of comparison of what the prices could be. Uh, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but it's much higher than this book. Uh, it's a great cover. Is it iconic? I don't know, but it's a lovely cover. I actually mm -hmm. never looked at it that really much nice, before. Really nice. Yeah, it's a very nice cover. Yeah, yeah. I would consider it, especially at that price for a 9.4. Crazy, crazy mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, pick of the week, guys. You ready? The Slab Master is about to smash down some knowledge. X-Men <laughs> Annual 14. X-Men Annual 14. It's a steal of a deal. I, th I think that's the bargain price. Yeah. And... The number one price you should pick up off this list. I think we should all go get one a, right after the show's over. A strong second, of course, is Avengers 144. I'm just want to say that. that is a great book. But I think the X-Men Annual 14, I think it's a winner right there. It's a wiener. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big wiener. Yeah. There was a time when you could, Raws were like 100 bucks. So yeah. you get a 9.8 for like 150. 150. Cost ridiculous. you 25 to get it graded. It's ridiculous. Who did it, the cover? Arthur Adams. Yeah, you get Arthur Adams. Yeah, don't forget, he'll date it too when you sign he'll, it. He'll date it. He'll date it. He'll date it. I don't know if I like that or not. Yeah, I I don't mind it. It adds, like, to at least let you know better that it's legit because you can, like, pinpoint where like where he was at on that date. So you can be like, officially, he was at a con, so more than likely he signed it. 
But I don't really like the date on the book. I think it looks kind of weird. But... I think it's a little morbid because I, how I think about it is when he actually finally dies, hopefully not too soon. <laughs> but to be clear, I can say it's like it's four years from his death. So it's pretty close. That's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. All right, That's guys. Kind of thing. As usual, if you love the drop lips as much as we love delivering, do a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell because we always go live on Wednesdays. And the show's getting hot. The live show is going crazy. You guys do not want to miss it. It's the best best live show on, on, on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so. But so. leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear who's your next mutant in the mcu who do you want to see first and even give us like a little story what you think should happen how they should appear and zach anything else yeah you gotta share how you do that you can pick your friends you can pick your nose you can pick your bank but you can't pick your friend's nose bank i think i missed something in there anyways pick pick what you like wisely guys but don't pick it for anybody else that's Does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah. I can see that's that. It. I can see that. Yeah, I succeeded. Collect what you like. Collect what you like. That's it. Don't listen to the naysayers. Except for us. These are the three people and Coco that you want to listen to. You have to trust. We will guide you down your path. No, I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want. All right, guys. Until we see you next time, stay safe and remember. Comic financial gurus. Get those gates. <laughs> Every single one. <laughs>